Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to take a look at what makes a user a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Maybe help you figure out just where you are in that flow. Now this isn't meant to uh, throw shade at anybody or say that you're not good enough at SketchUp or anything like that, but a lot of people don't really realize what level user they are. This is primarily because they learn on their own uh, maybe they're the only SketchUp user in your office. They don't have uh, uh, other sets, other people using SketchUp to compare themselves against. So what I want to do is take a look at what makes a user a beginner user, intermediate user, and what does it mean to move to an advanced user? Now, keep in mind, these are just rules of thumb. This is just some things we're going to take a look at. General, what does a model from a beginner look like versus an intermediate user? This is not hard and fast rules, but uh, an opportunity to give you an idea of what that level user looks like. Uh, we're going to start by looking at SketchUp models because that's that's why we're here. It's a SketchUp channel. Let's look. Okay, so I have a model here. If you have taken the fundamentals class on SketchUp Campus, of course, you probably recognize this. This looks familiar. Um, and when I look at this, I see this as being, yes, an an introductory user, a beginner user. There's a couple of things that tell me this. Uh, one is the real basic color schemes. Um, the arcs, all the arcs look like they're standard arcs. Uh, one, two, three arcs. As I look at stuff, I start picking things. Everything is grouped, which is good. I mean, a bunch of loose geometry would say you're not even a beginner user. It's like you need to take some classes, but I can see, you know, Pretty, pretty simple monolithic forms here. The follow me is a simple rectangle, basic shapes, which is good, no, no problems here. But uh, yeah, pretty basic moving, or, or pr pretty basic um, groups here. The geometry is very simple. Um, a couple things that I will say make this model look like it's from beginner. There's no tags used here. There's no scenes used here. Like I said, basic, real simple materials, nothing imported for materials. And then uh, here's a couple giveaways too. So one thing that I will notice from a beginner user versus a more intermediate user is the way I'm moving the model. So I'm, I'm imitating a, a beginner user here. Real quick, jumpy movements, grab, zooming kind of goes like this. This, this is how an intermediate person moves around, or I'm sorry, beginner user moves around their model. And this is, of course, again, not a bad thing. This is just somebody who's just learning Using the three button mouse, that's great, but you notice that uh, a lot of times when somebody's just first using it, they do this. They, they do these quick bang, bang, jump, jumping around. Uh, not a bad thing, but like I said, that's kind of what I would see on, on a beginner model. Another thing that I would notice uh, is either the default figure is standing here, right to the side, or gone completely. Something that a lot of people get in the habit of is just erase, get rid of it. All right, now we're going to start modeling. A more advanced user might leave the scale figure in there to actually see a scale or have their own scale figure or maybe a scale figure that's relative to the model they're working on. In a playground model, maybe you'd have a kid in here instead of Teddy, that sort of thing. But in the beginning, the default figure or no figure kind of tells me beginner model, that sort of thing. So that would be kind of a quick rundown of how I would call this, why I would notice this is a, a beginner model. Again, no problems here, nothing bad, but I would notice that. Let's let's compare that to what I would consider more of an intermediate model. So here we have very similar model, but I would call this more of an intermediate model. And here's why. I mean, there's there's more to this model. Sure, that's one thing, but let's look at the specifics of what's going on here. So like I said, one of the things that a lot of intermediate modelers will do is put their own scale figure in there as opposed to the default. Not a have to, not a, not a problem if it's not there, but it is something that I will notice happens. Uh, let's look at the slide here. The slide here is a giveaway that this is a more intermediate modeler because it's not just a rectangle that followed me on that path. It is a more advanced shape. And then up here at the top, look at this. Look at this, how this comes up, folds over, and is cut clean to the surface of this, the, the I don't know, plank? I don't know what you call it. <laughs> this, the surface, the floor here. Uh, nice clean cut off there. This right here says this is probably an intermediate modeler. There's some other steps here too, like I don't just have circles right here. I actually have these nice round uh, 
rounded off kind of inset curves. Not difficult to do, but kind of shows that, that that a little bit more consideration went into this model. Same with the roof here. Look how this is set in, right, as opposed to one big, just kind of simple shape, push pulled through. You can see how the overhang of the roof comes up here. And then we look at some more stuff, like uh, how the model's organized. I do have a bunch of tags over here. So as I turn tags on and off, everything is actually on a tag. So that's an org model organization is a big part of being a better user. So again, no loose geometry, everything's grouped. And I have components in here. If I pick one of these columns, I'll see that it is a component. Uh, co got some components here. I also have some nesting happening. So if I look at my columns, I click into them, I actually have multiple groups or components inside. So I have like a different level, two levels deep of components and everything is solid. That's the other thing is as I pick on, as I pick on these different pieces, I'll see that I just have solid groups all over the place. That's a big thing, not a required thing, but I know some, most people who are intermediate and considerate of what they're modeling will model solid components. Um, and like I said, nesting, here I have different pieces and I can actually see that each of these pieces are separate solid components inside of the group. And then materials. So as I look at the materials, I do have not just stock materials, but materials that have been put in and scaled and oriented correctly. I don't just have wood thrown on here where the grain's going against the column. Uh, this was oriented the correct direction. And just as kind of bonus, I have a, a see-through material here kind of emulating the mesh floor, or not mesh, but like a grid. I don't know what you'd call that. You know, the floor that you'd see on a playground like this. Uh, with a transparent material. So that's put on here and I can kind of see that that's that's a next level setting there. And the other thing is I have scenes in here. So where the previous model had nothing set up for scenes here, I have some set up for scenes. I'm assuming this would be, I have different views of the different sides. Maybe this is going to lay out something like that, but I can actually see that that additional information was put in there. The other thing that really sets a intermediate user apart from a beginner user is their use of the additional pieces of the SketchUp infrastructure or the, the SketchUp systems. More than this, a SketchUp user who is moving on intermediate uses things like layout to create their output, uses extensions of a computer extension warehouse and see some extensions installed. That kind of is a, is a flag to me that this is an intermediate user. So going beyond just modeling something and that's it, but actually using the, the whole ecosystem and using multiple pieces, that indicates to me that somebody is an intermediate. So this brings you to the end of like, well, what happens when you want to become an expert? Where does an expert go from a model like this? Well, an expert user is a little more difficult to define. Some people would say an expert user is somebody who can go in and model anything in SketchUp. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go that way. So when the, you look at the usage of SketchUp, the path of the, what a SketchUp user does, beginning's all pretty much the same. Everybody starts in the same spot, learns the same tools, learns how to you know, draw things, how to move in 3D. That all kind of tends to be the same. But after that, that's when you really start to evolve. So you go from being a beginner user to an intermediate user. An intermediate user usually ends up with a specific workflow or two. Somebody who's gonna model for 3D printing is gonna model very differently from somebody who's modeling for framing, for like uh, architectural models, that sort of thing. They could both end up with intermediate abilities, but they're gonna be very specific to the workflows that they follow. That next step to advanced or expert level modeling means kind of following that, in my opinion, following that even further. So some people would say, oh, an expert can model anything. Yeah, that's that, that might be a true thing, but I've seen people who I'd absolutely say are expert architectural modelers who couldn't necessarily go in and model a teddy bear because that kind of organic soft modeling is not something they regularly do, but they're still experts in what they do. Expertise is going in and knowing exactly how to use the tools that you need to create the output, the outcome that you have to have. So in my opinion, an expert is somebody who has their workflow locked down to the point that they can fire through and get things done.
then <laughs> Expert Plus is that ability to go outside of your workflow and start to learn other pieces. Um, I don't know that there's anybody who knows how to do everything there ever was to do in SketchUp. I certainly don't know it, and I have not met that person yet. So I don't know that to say to be an expert, you have to know how to do everything. I would say to, you guys see that? <laughs> to be an expert, you really have to learn how to model the things you do, use the tools in the ecosystem. An expert has their template set up in layout. An expert has their bookmark uh, models on 3D Warehouse. An expert knows the, the, the extension developers that they use and go and, and keep in, keep on top of when they have updates to their extensions. And they have created a system inside of their own SketchUp ecosystem where they can really just rock out their models, their output. And to me, that's where an expert is. Um, I would love to hear your take though. What do you think separates a beginner from an intermediate user from an expert? Where are you on that path? And what do you think is the pinnacle of SketchUp use? Where do you actually get to expertise? What does it look like? Um, I'm gonna again say that I have been using SketchUp for a long time. I get to use it and train it and show it and I do it live so you guys can come see how I do it. But uh, I don't know that I'm the ultimate, I'm nowhere near the ultimate SketchUp user. I will say that absolutely. Uh, and I think that I do a lot of things really good but I don't think I would be anywhere near an expert uh, based on my own explanation because I don't model every day. I don't have a workflow that I pursue and, and get to tighten down and be perfect at. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And if you like this video, click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, do leave me a comment. What do you think about those, those breaks in beginner, intermediate, advanced, expertise. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And if you have an idea for another video, something we haven't done before, leave that too. We like making these videos a lot. We like it even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.